Hey, Vince and Amanda, good morning to you. And it's sites like the ones behind us that we're seeing all over from this storm damage. This tree right here, right outside of a home on Williamsport Drive here in Norcross. We're finding branches everywhere. In fact, we'll walk with you this way as we make our way around this tree so we can show you the extent of the damage. And it's pretty severe. This area was hit particularly hard because you had high tide mixed at the same time as the storm was coming over Georgia's coastline. So what we're seeing right now, I mean, Megan, this, this is the potential here for some real serious damage if this were to come down on anyone who was walking nearby. In fact, look at this right here, okay? We're gonna walk over and show you the roots of the tree and to give you just an idea of how powerful this storm was. I'm about six feet tall. Look at how high this thing goes, right? Every so like this right here, it's hard. It's hard to stand when that wind when that wind starts uh, when that wind starts going. I can see a large crowd off in the distance. Okay, as far as we can see, we can see protesters in the middle of William Street. Some of them running to the crowd right now. This is all in the last 10, 15 minutes for much of the evening, and we've been out here for several hours. For much of the evening, what we saw was large groups of people standing, many of them chanting, many of them singing. They stood right by the highway. Good Monday morning. To everyone. It's Adam Harding here on some uh, major breaking news that you're going to want to know about. It's your Monday morning commute will be crippled today from a chemical spill on the downtown connector. You know, Kim, looking at his medical records, you think this doctor has a squeaky clean pass tonight. He is being linked to dozens of deaths. In fact, federal agents earlier tonight came to his Jonesboro office tonight. It's all locked up. The Chattanooga Recruitment Center behind us where he first came and opened fire. We found about 50 bullet holes in the front window. It all boils down to a simple numbers game. Take, for example, Adamsville. The district says there are 381 students enrolled. For more than two decades, it has been an institution here in downtown Atlanta. You know, the Braves are really swinging for the fences with their new stadium here in Cobb County. The value of these stolen comic books, we're talking upwards of $250,000, a quarter million. He crawled right through the doggy door. It almost looks like a war zone out here, doesn't it? Experts say it's sites like this that are becoming far too common all around the world. And among the officers here training in Alabama, there was one from Belgium who says what he saw today, he has never seen before. Three, two, one. In rural Alabama, it was training ground for the fight against ISIS. It isn't if it's going to happen, it's when is it going to happen? That's the bottom line. As terrorists struck Brussels early Tuesday. So this is TATP and this is HMTD. So TATP is an improvised explosive. We were with Ryan Morris and his team as they were gearing up for critical training. We're doing out of the box thinking. Tonight's lesson, explosives, how to detect them and how to defuse them. Ultimately, explosives are the same all around the world and the threat is there, it's very real. What's happened today, I was expecting this. Among the officers training, we met Joris Kirchhoff, a Belgium security official working in the US as his home country came under siege. I've been on the phone uh, all day by, by WhatsApp, by, by, by FaceTime with people. I received my first message um, this local time, uh, four o'clock this morning. In a bizarre twist, Kirchhoff says he himself has had a personal run-in with the only terror suspect to have survived the deadly massacre in Paris where 130 were killed. Analysts believe Salah Abdeslam's arrest just last week played a role in today's triple bombings. I found his name back in my book, which is more than 10 years old. Today was not the end. I think it's the beginning. I'm afraid it's the beginning of something huge. How can we defend ourselves? We try to do training like this. It is training unique to Alabama, now reaching officers right here in Atlanta and around the world. I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News, 19. And Ben, good evening to you. It's getting dark now, but if you can believe it, it was a really nice day here in Blue Ridge. Finally, some blue skies are relief from the gray, overcast, and hazy days they've had for weeks now. But despite even that, businesses here were left wondering, where are all the customers? This is like peak tourist season. In downtown Blue Ridge. It's so beautiful today, so I came out. She has nice stuff. Holly Faye has to wear a mask just to walk around. Even doing small things like walking up here, see, I'm, I'm short of breath. And it's like having some pressures on your chest all the time. The reason? The Rough Ridge Fire is growing. 25,000 acres now. And air quality here is declining. 
steel rails chasing sunshine round the bend winding through the trees like a ribbon in the wind louisa branscon can only sing for better weather i love north georgia i'm here because of the natural beauty and we're losing a lot of acreage at the local seed shop ordinarily the street is full it's not the birds tom striker's looking for it's the customers. This is what, what we've been looking at. It's been lonely time in the store here. Business here is slow. We're down, I don't know, 25, 30% probably from what's normal for November. This is just sad. It's very, very sad. And you worry about the rest of the business owners in town aren't making it. I have to have this, right? Shoppers like Karen Cisco can see the streets aren't packed. Is it me? These two Southern gals know things are getting bad. Devastating, actually. With You know, we've been trying to pray for rain and... You know, there's no relief in sight. I used to be young when I did this. The Johnsons are setting up for the holidays. We've been doing it for 16 years, so we ought to be professionals at it. <laughs> They're hoping the decorations will light up the registers. I figured with uh, the holidays and all, it would be more crowded today, but it's not. Everybody's staying inside. Sharon and Ben, they say everything is all about timing, and it couldn't be worse timing for people here. Next week is supposed to be the busiest week as we go into the Thanksgiving holiday and then Black Friday to kick off the holiday shopping season. And everybody here is saying if they can't get some customers right away, at least they're hoping to see a little rain. But it is not in the forecast. Tonight we're live in Blue Ridge. I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News. I'm the one that found them. The door was locked. He was unresponsive, wouldn't come to the door. I busted out that window. I opened the curtains and I found him face down on the bed. He was purple and blue. There wasn't no hope. When I saw her, she, she wasn't herself. He told me that my dad was dead. I just dropped the phone and hollered for my mom. Oh my God, he's gone. There is one man these three families say links them all together. Dr. Narendra Nagaretti, a Jonesboro psychiatrist recently arrested. She liked him, but she just didn't feel comfortable with what he was giving her. And I was saying, take it, maybe you'll feel better. We were there as federal agents raided his Clayton County office. They moved in and shut him down, accusing the doctor of unlawfully prescribing medication. Investigators tell us three dozen of his patients have died in a five-year span. This says 36 people died, 12 of them overdose deaths. In a CBS 46 exclusive, we tracked down the doctor to a Henry County home. A grand jury could soon hear his case. Right now, he is only facing one felony charge. Were you running a pill mill? No, sir. Not at all. So why can't you, why can't you explain that to me then? Let me talk to my lawyer, sir. His lawyer hasn't agreed to talk to me. The doctor tried hiding behind his door. I explained to you, sir, I'm an honest man. I look after all the severely mentally ill patients. Please understand, sir. But court records allege he wasn't at all taking care of his patients properly. Many we found in these documents received minimal examination, evaluation, or testing. Yet the doctor regularly prescribed excessive amounts of controlled substances for no legitimate medical purpose. I think these patients had an addiction. I think Dr. Nagaretti enabled their addiction. Michael Robinson still lives across the street from the home where he found his dad, David, dead from an overdose. Hell, I miss him every day. It's my dad. I'm only 31 years old. According to this newly released search warrant, family members told investigators David had a history of prescription drug abuse. But records show at least 24 times in a 13-month span he got his hands on medication, including a bottle of 90 anxiety pills just four days before his death. You know, if he wasn't prescribed all them meds, then yeah, he'd still be alive today. And this is what I haven't thrown away. Georgette Mayhe tells me she met the doctor several times. She doesn't blame him for the death of her diabetic daughter, but says she's still asking why he kept prescribing so much medication. In fact, here's a bottle she still has full of pills. And her and her brother. Latricia Mayhe died nine months ago. Her and her daughter look so much alike. Leaving Georgette to raise a granddaughter all on her own. I'll be 65 in a couple of months. 
I didn't think I would have a teenager. He was taking a lot of medication. And then there's Shonda Witten. This is the last photo ever taken of her dad. It was also the last time she ever saw him. Roy Denson is one of the 36 names we found listed in these court records. He said that he wished he could have been a dad, but all he knew how to do was be a friend and that he will always be my friend. They're all part of a case police say is unlike any other in the state's history. And it was so egregious, instead of receiving help, it appears that some of them were receiving a death sentence. Clayton County's police chief helped oversee Nagaretti's arrest earlier this year. Of course, Clayton County is a better place now that Dr. Nagaretti is off the street. It is the latest bust in a statewide crackdown on these so-called pill mills, where patients allege they have easy access to pain meds, not because they need them, but because they want them. The top four causes of overdose drugs in our state are Oxycontin, Methadone, Xanax, in hydrocodone. And that's all stuff you can get through pain clinics. It's why the Attorney General fought for tougher laws and recently helped pass new legislation requiring all pain clinics to be licensed with the state. They have to be owned by doctors or hospitals and not a single employee can have a criminal record. How many suspected pill mills would you say your office is investigating right now? Candidly, that's not public information. I will tell you it's less than it was before passage of the pill mill bill. The law doesn't say a doctor has to stop prescribing medicine just because someone has a drug problem. Defense attorneys warn of a legal gray zone, a sort of protection or buffer for doctors. Despite the high number of deaths, Dr. Nagaretti isn't facing murder charges. They either have to show that the doctor intentionally killed the patient, or they need to show that the doctor's writing of the prescriptions was so reckless, so negligent, that it was foreseeable that it would lead to someone's death. Our own investigation found Dr. Nagaretti had a squeaky clean record with the state medical board. It has left these families asking, how could this have happened? And what is proper justice? As we continue to learn more about the 36 patients named in this investigation, the doctor's future is uncertain. Despite repeated attempts for comment, his attorney contacted me just one time. It was a text message telling me to stay away from his client's property. Tonight, we know Dr. Nagaretti's medical license has been suspended. We will keep digging. I'm Adam Harding, CBS 46 News 19.